to meet him. I want you to hear his story, his advice, and what could be done on the next Morton Downey Jr. show, which starts right now. Come on. <laughs> have your attention. This is an important show, please. Our guest on home base, I'll introduce as uh, Rich Yezzo. Rich, how are you tonight? No. Uh, Rich really is fun. over here. I'm sorry. Rich Yezzo at the Loudmouth and Howard Bentley, I beg your pardon, is on home base with me. And uh, Tony, who is a, uh, an AIDS patient and uh, is dying of AIDS. And, uh, uh, and this is the toughest show I've ever done. Because Tony Downey is his last name, and that's not an accident. He's my brother. And uh, I want to find out what got him to this point. I've known him all my life. Tony, uh, let me just ask you a question. Tell me first about your lifestyle, all right? How did you get the disease? From gay sex. Gay sex. Uh... Do you know who gave it to you? No. So it wasn't monogamous sex? No. Were you monogamous at any point? No. No. Were you ever married? Yes. How many times? Twice. Do you, uh, you think you were always gay? Yes. Why did you get married then? To hide that fact. What happened to your first wife on your honeymoon? She was killed. How was she killed? Automobile accident. Automobile accident. Uh, did you have anal sex? Yes. Were you the... Oh, God. Were you the giver or the recipient? Both. Did you ever use a condom? Sometimes. How do you feel about... The man who gave you sex, I mean, uh, gave you AIDS. Could you forgive him? Yes. Do you think you've given anyone else AIDS? I hope not. Let, let not, me go. Not, 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 since, not since I have known. Okay, four years ago, you don't know this, four years ago, I was diagnosed as HIV positive. And for the next three years, I did nothing but drink, and drug. While you were drinking yeah. and while you were on drugs, did you still have sex? Oh, sure. Uh, Any, anyone, anyone who Why did gay, you drink and take drugs? Trying to hide it. Huh? Trying to hide it. Trying to hide it. Huh? Okay. Did you know it? Huh? No. Okay. When did you find out? Huh? When did you find out? I found out when you were in an alcohol treatment center. That's right. You treated for alcohol and drugs. Right. Uh, you had found it out three years earlier. Mm -hmm. you've, had, you've had active AIDS now for quite a while. Uh, uh, let, me go to, uh, let me go to Howard Bentley. Uh, uh, Howard, how many times have you heard these stories? Like your brother? Yeah. Oh, thousands. Hundreds. Uh, Rich, Rich, are you out there with me? Yes. Rich, you're at, uh, if I believe, you're head of St. Clair's Hospital. That's correct. That is the largest AIDS hospital in the United States of America. We have the largest AIDS treatment program in the United States. That's correct. Are they walking out of your place? Are you curing them? Eight out of ten admissions walk out. Yeah. How long do they stay out when they walk out? Three, four years. Then die? Eventually, yeah. Uh -huh. What do you treat them with in a place like that? And let me ask you, before I ask you what, they, what you treat them with, what is the makeup of the population of your AIDS patients? How, what percentage? Of, I imagine it was a higher percentage gay at one point, and now it's starting to, uh, 
starting to proliferate through the entire population. At the time when we opened up the Spelman Center, which was November of 1985, and again, St. Clair's is a general acute care hospital. Part of that hospital is the Spelman Center. Mm -hmm. When we opened up services to people with HIV disease, we were seeing mixes of about 70-30. 70% gay, bisexual men, 30% uh, IV drug abusers. With a few percentage points on either end for children, of, uh, of people that are HIV positive. But that 30% that were uh, drug users, what percentage of them were gay or bisexual? Good question. It's Did you ever try to find that out? Always. It's very uh -huh. difficult to get accurate information. Uh, like, w when we make that distinction, if the person happens to be both gay or bisexual and an IV drug abuser, we put them into the gay or bisexual class, if you will, uh -huh. just to try to keep that distinction. But to get to the... Uh, the, the, the guts, the core of the, uh, uh, it's been extremely difficult to get accurate information. What we're seeing now in New York City is about a 50-50 split. How do you treat them? Well, actually what we do best is to treat the, the, the symptoms. If someone comes up with a particular opportunistic infection, uh, whatever the particular infection is, our doctors, our physicians will treat that particular infection. We've had some success with AZT. All right, Some but, success, and yet I hear there are others who say AZT may be as bad as the disease later on down the line. Well, we've had, again, I'm only talking from history of our particular center. We've been in operation since November of 85, and in early 86 when the drug was put into trials, and we were originally in those initial trials, and even just before those trials began we were using it. The drug uh, uh, has, we feel, elongated life in some cases, and improve the quality of life in some cases. But I'm talking about a population of about 10 to 15 percent of our total clinic population. All right, so this is, this is AZT. Mm -hmm. This is my brother's prescription. It's a month's supply. There's the pill. That's about two weeks' supply. Two weeks. Week and a half, really. Fifth, up to $1,500 a month for two bottles of this. I invited Burroughs Welcome to be on this program to find out how in the name of Christ in heaven that times 30 or 40 or 60 or 100 could be valuable, more valuable than gold. Much more valuable than gold. What? Can, I, can I insert you just one second a little further? Mm-hmm. That drug was developed, and while I talked to the benefit in some instances of use of that drug, that drug was developed on an NIH grant using tax dollars in 1966-67. So we the taxpayers paid for pay it. For it paid for but it. not for, for to be used with HIV, uh, with relation to AIDS, to be used in relation to a cancer. So you're talking about in a prior tax year, if you're a business person, that they incurred this expense, wrote it off in those prior tax years, and now are claiming that the development costs are the reason for the high expense of that Sorry. drug. The Liberace syndrome. How many have really died from AIDS and we don't know about it? Stay with us. We're going to examine further what we've started to talk about in the first segment of this program. For those of you who have just joined us, uh, I'm not trying to be morbid. Uh, my brother Tony knew exactly what we were going to do on this show, and he decided it was time to come forward, he decided it was time for him and others like him to help people around this country who would listen, who would accept help. And maybe we can draw a diagram of what happens. I, I think he's gutsy as hell. How many of us, knowing as we have from the previous history of this disease that uh, perhaps this is the one and only time he'll be on television, knowing that uh, can smile and laugh and uh, tell a joke and get along. Tony, let me, let me ask you a question. I think it's important for people to understand. Howard, if you want to jump in here at any point, please do. To let people know how you recognized 
you may have AIDS, the symptoms. I know HIV told you that chances are someday you were going to have it, mm -hmm. all right? Matter of fact, probably 99% you were going to have it, right. all right? What were the things that said to you, uh-oh, I'm in deep water here? In the beginning? Yeah. Uh, it was the lifestyle I led with the drugs, the booze, uh, getting drunk, knowing not who I had sex with, or what, and finally taking the responsibility and saying I better get tested. And then once I did get tested, it blew me apart. And then I thought, well, I'll have to live with it. Or, die, I, with or it. die with it. And how am I going to break this to my family? You know, well, this what'd is you, a, it's, 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 it's a disease that doesn't take. I, it, it doesn't play favorites. It just doesn't play favorites. When you knew you had it actively, when you knew you were going into the arc stage, all right, AIDS-related complex, I started having night sweats. I started getting thrush. What is thrush? Where your mouth, the interior of your mouth breaks out. Mm -hmm. uh, having severe diarrhea. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of things with it. It's, it's uh, Howard. Howard, are you an AIDS patient? Yes. I discovered that Active I was diagnosed AIDS. last year. Active AIDS? Yes. And prior to that, I'd spent about two years being quite ill with different things such as pneumonia and uh, shingles and uh, Epstein-Barr syndrome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, since I'm gay... Epstein-Barr syndrome, now, I mean, isn't that like mononucleosis? It doesn't all that part of the same family? Uh, it is, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, at any rate, um, because I'd known some friends who had died from AIDS, I thought perhaps it could happen to me. Then I said, no, it could never happen to me. I'm, it doesn't happen to nice people. And so... Are you gay? Yes. And uh, I finally took myself to a hospital, and the, the doctor said, are you gay? And I said, yes. And he said, then you have AIDS. And uh, you said that, you're gay, and then he said you have AIDS? <laughs> yes. And that's... What did you have if you weren't gay? A cold? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, um, it's, the thing I just told you is true of almost everybody I've ever talked to who had, who, it, who developed AIDS. That is to say, the treatment that we get in hospitals is quite harsh. Perhaps it's the best way to, uh, to be... Well, let me, let me jump over here to Sal Catapano, the Catapano uh, Clinic. Sal, uh, when I was examining this and looking into it after my brother told me, about what was going on six months ago. I was horrified to learn that the Center for Disease Control, all right, in Atlanta, has the wrong criteria for diagnosing AIDS patients. Are we getting false facts from the government? Well, let's put it this way. It sure isn't clear. And I would say it is false. We don't know if there is a virus. We have never seen it. And the thing, I might jump around a little bit. When we're talking here, we started off with AZT. Now, let us just digress a little. If there is a possibility that there is no virus, what in the hell are we doing with AZT? It's supposed to be an antiviral, yet it's a chemotherapeutic drug. If all the AIDS patients have a low immune system, what the hell are we putting chemotherapy in there? We're not helping them. And yet you hear all this here, Oh, excuse me. Wait a minute, you said ACT isn't helping us? How long have you been on it, Tom? I've been on it six months. Six months? Six months. If you just go a little bit longer, I hate to say this yeah. to you, a little bit longer than what you're doing right now, yeah. you're going to find a drastic about face. I've seen so many. I'm up to about close to 200 patients. Maybe not. Maybe I've, not. Seen, I've, 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 seen, I've seen patients that have been on it two years. That's correct. Two, There's a two great years. possibility. I have a friend who's been on it for three years, and he was dead when they put him on it. When I say dead, he had like days. So well, AZT, as far as I'm concerned, is the drug right now. You have to speak that way right now. This is your experience. Uh, that's right. And until something else comes along, I'll continue to use right. it. Right. In your and case, you're right to present it this way. 
but you do have other other individuals who go on this medication they get reactions in three weeks reactions in five weeks it so happens when we get them them and beat the hell out with AZT they had two or three so so-called sarcomas mm -hmm. when they get through off this period of of the AZT you see sarcomas all over their body it just pushes it out whatever the hell they're pushing out doesn't even look like so let's jump in here well you know i'm having a great deal of difficulty with with what you're purporting the drug hdt has been useful in some instances of the virus and they can identify the virus and they have a confirmatory test for the virus not only a screening for antibodies but they have a test to confirm the presence of the virus and in what amount okay so i disagree with you very strongly on that but in 20 percent Anywhere from 15 to 20 percent of people with HIV disease, the drug AZT is extremely useful. Even considering the immorality of Burroughs Welcome and the way they price fixed this drug, right, leaving that aside, it has benefit, and I've seen benefit in our clinic. But you're saying the presence of the virus. Did you see it? Did he see it? Did, did the whole world see this virus? We don't know what the hell we're talking about. Can you explain to the audience what a Western blot test does? Let me just say one thing. Do you know why the Western blot and the ELISA test was Please performed? Please answer my question. Wait a minute. No. Answer my question. No, I'm not answering it. Because I don't think you know why this what test What is ELISA test show? It's, it's measuring the amount of antibodies, isn't it? Not? Correct. What the hell antibodies are we measuring? All right, and if somebody has a false positive reading or a false negative reading. What do you mean by false positive? A positive that may not be positive. Although you're not going to agree with me because you don't believe that somebody can tell you. Right, that I'm going to bring on a guest. I'm going to bring on a guest in just a moment. I want to go to some commercials. I'm going to bring on a guest. We'll get deeper into this situation. I want to go back to Tony, and I want you to take a break with me for a minute. Stand by. Transportation for the Morton Downey Jr. Show, furnished by Redwood Limousine. When in New York, call 212-226-7665. I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you, in all the years I've known my brother Tony, I didn't know he was this tough. Uh, I gotta ask you a really tough question. You're facing death now. You're here on your brother's television show, coming out for the first time for the world to see. Yeah. All right. Do you have any message to give to the world? I'll have to think about that one for a little while. Okay. Let me, uh, let me introduce you to a gentleman who is uh, with us on stage right now. Uh, I'm going to introduce you to uh, Peter Duesberg. Peter, good evening to you, sir. Good evening. He's a research scientist. He's been studying AIDS <laughs> for uh, 24 years. He says HIV, Rich, is not the cause. Explain that to me, pal. Of AIDS. That's what I'm saying, yeah. It can't be the cause of AIDS because it doesn't do enough to kill a person. What do you mean it doesn't do enough? HIV is not a powerful enough virus? That's right, yeah. See, How powerful is it? Very little. It's unpowerful. It's a dud. It's a what? A dud. It's a dud? Yeah, it's a sleeping... Oh, well, let me ask you a question. What if... Mm -hmm. uh, I hate to be graphic. Uh, yeah. Mom, take the little kids away from the TV set right now, please. Yeah. Let me go right to you. Yes. What happens if some girl yeah. is having oral sex with some bisexual and she swallows? Um. <laughs> what happens? I, is she here? Huh? Is she here? I, I really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what happens? What happens if she's having sex with a bisexual who has HIV? All right, oral sex, yep. and she swallows his ejaculation. I think the virus wouldn't do too well. The virus doesn't stand stomach acid well. It would, it would completely annihilate the virus. Completely the virus, annihilate. see, as yet, only 1,300 women have contracted AIDS. How they contract it? Presumably by sexual transmission. Presumably, in eight years, in a country that has 250 million people, speak 125 million women. That's 1,000 in 125 million in eight years. 
that doesn't speak for a strong virus. Well, yeah. remember flu or polio or viral in epidemics like that. Well, what is this then? Well, how, how, do they get, how do they get AIDS? Out? How do they get AIDS? Let's, let's forget that and let's find out. Yeah. Give me some hard facts why the virus isn't the answer. The virus doesn't do enough. See, viruses, when they do their thing... Give me some is, hard facts. It doesn't do well, enough. Okay, but I tell how you does now. the AIDS come about? I tell you now. See, okay. when viruses do their thing, that is, when they cause a disease, they want to, their goal is to multiply. Mm -hmm. They use you as a resource to replicate it. Okay. You're, you're food for that. Yeah? Okay. So they do their best when they take much out of you, when they infect you, infiltrate you to a large degree. Okay. What infect you infects yourself. someone who right. has AIDS? That's so when, what I'm trying when to find When you get out. a disease from a virus, many of your cells are being killed or infected by that virus. That's why you suffer because you're losing more cells than you can afford to lose and can replace. Now, the AIDS virus doesn't do that at all. It infects one in 10,000 or 100,000 cells, blood cells only, at any time, even when you're dying from the disease. If, if the HIV isn't doing anything, yeah. why the hell have 43,000 people died from AIDS? That's what we have to find out. Oh, you don't know? Yes. You I do know? I don't know. I you can, have an idea. I can speculate. You have a hypothesis. I have speculations. Yes. Give me a speculation because it seems to me that's all we're hearing. Well, the one, yes. No, what, what, I, what I told you so far are facts. But the virus isn't doing anything. That's a fact. That's not a speculation. It's only infecting one in 100,000 cells. That's not enough to kill anybody. That's like So losing. please tell, speculate. tell me. Please speculate. Speculate. You know, I, so. I can only speculate uh, with the epidemiologists. The epidemiologists have said risk behavior is what you have to avoid. And risk behavior includes what we heard earlier from your brother. That is, Dear uh, God, man, let me tell you, Peter, you've been studying this for 24 years and this is what you come up with? Viruses. <laughs> Viruses. I can tell you. Well, let me go to Sal. Sal, you've got another crack. Uh, well, I don't mean crack. Bomb, right? You got another theory, all right? Your theory is injecting patients with typhus. Now, what the hell no, is that? No, typhoid. 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 Infect them with that's typhoid that's so they can really. Let get me sick. say one thing more. Mm -hmm. If that, what does AID stand for? Acquired immune deficiency syndrome. Mm -hmm. Now, if your whole immune system is down. Do you take another substance to tear it down more? What has happened here, you can have, you hate to use the word cofactor, but you've got to realize one thing. If you start interviewing a lot of these AIDS patients, I ask them, how many times did you have syphilis? Well, I had it two never. times. How many times did you have gonorrhea? Eleven times. One day, I'm sitting at the, t at the desk, and I said to the You've met someone who's had syphilis twice and gonorrhea 11 times? 11 times. Try not to introduce him to my daughter, will you? <laughs> <laughs> but I will tell you something, what this is a gospel truth, and this is what's happening. We got, we're in a damn era of a condition that we, don't, we can't even cure even syphilis anymore. There isn't any, any antibiotics that are working. Well, I mean, let me ask you a question. I don't know if you guys remember at the end of the Vietnam War when the soldiers came back from Southeast Asia, we heard of a new uh, gunnery and syphilis that was totally resistant to all the penicillins, all that. We heard that in 75, 76. Man, don't go with some chick who's going to give you that disease. You can't get rid of it. Boom, we've never heard of it again. What happened? Is it now disguised as AIDS? Since then, it's been multiplying. It's way out of control. A person today goes to a physician, exa for example, well, you know, I have gonorrhea. Or let's say syphilis, all right? Now, who says that? A patient? A patient all says... All of a sudden, he's a doctor? Wait, no, 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 no. Wait, 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 doc. wait. A patient huh? comes in and all of a sudden, not all of a sudden, oh, it comes over and says, I think I can... Wait a minute, I asked you, the patient is saying this to the doctor, I have syphilis? Well, he had, Are no, you going to cure no, me? No, no, no. What he says is, I think I have syphilis. I've been exposed. I want to be. I want to be protected, Don. I want to be protected. So the doctor right away, he'll probably take a, a uh, blood analysis and send it off. What is happening today, even in the lab, you must realize it. 
These are de these these are tests that most of the times are done by machines. Number one. Okay, let's get through this quickly. I'm really getting Yo, bored. All right. Dr. Now du you go and have. Dr. A I have a question, Doctor Duesberg. You mentioned Duesberg, sir, not Duesberg. Duesberg. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Duesberg, you mentioned. <laughs> you mentioned you mentioned the presence of a virus. Yes. Does yes. It, does does this virus, whatever you want to call it, exist? It exists. Does yes. it exist? It exists. This man doesn't agree that it even exists. He Peter, says the virus doesn't even exist. Peter, did you prove that? How there could is you a say virus? that? Well, there is enough evidence for that. I'm convinced no, I'm asking, that he says, Did we yes. prove that there is a virus? One can do that, yes. One can do it? Yeah. Did the government do it, as far as you're concerned? Well, the government, I don't know whether they do that, but sometimes... I mean, did they present it that it's a genuine Probably. virus? Well, well, is there a scientific way to find out if the virus is there or not? Yes, that okay. exists, yeah, yeah. So there is a, it's a virus. Well, well, the answer. The answer is I'm asking him. Is there? Well, did he so see a virus? Now, well, let me ask first, you a question. Really, uh, before we get this into a doctoral dissertation or something, it sounds to me what you're saying is, if we can cure syphilis, we can cure AIDS. That there? is right. That's it? It is almost 75% correct. And I would go as high as 80%. Have because you cured it, them? Well, we're at a position right now. What we do is we stimulate the immune system and bring it up to a certain point. Then the next thing we do, after about 20 or 30 treatments of the injection of typhoid, then we go ahead and we take them and we use three different shots of penicillin. It may be a case that we may have neurosyphilis. It's very hard to prove neurosyphilis, even if you do a spinal tap. Neurosyphilis, of course, being what the great Caruso died from. That is right. Yeah. So let me tell you something. When I was tested, <coughs> for this disease. They ran syphilis tests. They did spinal taps. They did everything. All negative. All negative. No syphilis. Perfect. No gonorrhea. Perfect. The height, so don't stand there and tell me AIDS is syphilis. No, no, no. Wait a minute. I did not. Yeah, let me yes, just yes, say that's one what thing. It, no, that's no. What it we're not saying like AIDS is syphilis. AIDS is it's a high form of syphilis. Is that syndrome. what you're saying? You're saying it's a applied immune deficiency syndrome. We're not calling syphilis AIDS. What, what are you calling? What are you calling AIDS? What we're, what we're trying. What are you calling AIDS? AIDS. What are you calling AIDS? AIDS is applied immune deficiency syndrome. Okay. Where does syphilis come in? Let me ask you something. How did you get? If you want to say you have AIDS, how did you get AIDS? Probably by being. <laughs> big That's song. right. Right. That's okay. right. Do you realize today? When in the practice of homosexuality. Wait a minute, don't Just bring, a minute. Just, Let me get to the point. Not homosexuality. Show, wait a minute. Because this can hit you. Of course. Yeah. Of course. What I'm trying to say that we know. And if he goes to the wrong bar. Wait, wait a minute. And he probably does. <laughs> when you have when you have rectal sex, yeah. the person who has syphilis here, who has been sloppy and not corrected his condition. You don't have to have just when he, when he penetrates the other fellow, no, you don't have to have just there, rectal sex. Syphilis. Don't say you do. You don't live with it. I do. You have and I know how it happens. It's communication between it's body and my friend. It's communication. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? <laughs> it's what when the body fluid of one person comes into contact with the body fluid of another person and is a uh -huh. high enough, and is a high enough inoculum if I can use a scientific expression, to pass the virus, which does exist. Now, I've heard, Rich, I've heard just in the newspapers a couple of weeks ago, some wacko doctor says that saliva will cure AIDS. I mean, what do you, what do, you do in the hospital? Well, Spit yeah. in someone's mouth all day? <laughs> huh? so, someone thought that because of uh, uh, the inability to prove that uh, through oral sex, for example, the virus is not transmitted. Uh, that saliva had some kind of uh, uh, an effect there. But if you think about it, if a person has a patent mouth, the mouth is intact, no lesions, no sores, the, the stomach itself is an acid base, there's no ulcer, there's no opening, mm -hmm. you have uh, a, patent, a patent area. So you're not going to have communication, when I say bodily fluids, of blood and semen. I think the doctor will agree, agree with me that there is the highest concentration of this virus in semen and in blood. There are less degrees in tears, not enough to cause an, an inoculum. Not enough to cause an inoculum. Well, question, question. Maybe, maybe. 
It's a body fluid. You don't know what that is yet? <laughs> What the hell is this? Hindi Garden 1 and 2? We'll be back in a second. Take a break. I want to come back here. Why, why Sal is trying to find what semen is, I want to come back, I want to come back to Rich, Rich question, all right, for, uh, I would guess that probably 99.99 .99 and nine tenths of one percent of my audience are, uh, are straight like myself, but what about if we have oral sex with a woman, can we catch AIDS that way? Again, I think that if you understand what risk behavior is, and calling, uh, I, I know what risk, I know what you're saying. Calling it the community. What I gotta wear? A condom on my. Well, the way the way to <laughs> the way to avoid contact with the virus is to avoid risk behavior. Period. That's the only safe way to avoid contact with the virus. Well, here I go into a lot of drinking. That's right. <laughs> Honey, uh, Tony, I asked you. Uh, I asked my brother earlier, mm -hmm. sitting here facing death, uh, knowing this will probably be the last time he'll be on television. Uh, if you had a message for the world, knowing, knowing what you know now, and I, I know, I know what a problem this must have been with you when, uh, for you, uh, the fact that you tried to get married twice so that your family would think that you were straight, uh, uh, not wanting anyone to know those things. I also now know of a story that happened to you when you were a youngster uh, that being I won't. Raped. Pardon me. You're being raped. This is not a show. You. The tell only message that I would like to give the world, this audience, is this. It's very simple. This is a disease none of you, that's right, none of you in this audience can run away from. None of you. It could hit your brother, your mother, your father, your sister, anyone in your family. It could even hit you. What we need is funding. We need the government, the United States government, to get honest. You need Burroughs and Welcome to stop and raping any the taxpayers other. after we already paid for it. <laughs> let, let me ask you a question. I, you just brought up something that I just heard. You said you were raped as a youngster. Right. Uh, is, uh, is that what made you gay? I believe so. Do you believe gayness is acquired or you're born with it? I think both. Okay, I, I, I think both. I guess it, I, it, it, I'll save that for another show because I'll tell you, son of a bitch, you're going to be back a thousand times. You ain't dying! Now, uh, I got I got to go back to I got to go back to Rich. Rich, uh, 1979, thousand people had AIDS. No one gave a rat snot ball, right? Absolutely. Uh, 1982. 1982, you had more people with AIDS, maybe 10,000 people, 15,000. It was called Gay-Related Immune Deficiency, GRID, right? I know what it was called because I was on the air out in San Francisco and I was fighting when I heard about this GRID, and I fought to have all of the gay bathhouses closed, all right? I was run out of San Francisco on a rail because the bathhouses, the gay bathhouses, were owned by a very important California politician. Now, uh -huh. here we are, 1988, 43,000 people are already dead, fully two-thirds of the number of people who died in the Vietnam War, all right? And who really gives a <laughs> Who's doing something about it? I mean, we're the people, and granted, we don't like the lifestyle of a gay lifestyle, 
but they're our brothers, they're our sisters, they're Americans, and we're damn well going to do something for them. Why isn't it being done? Absolutely. To answer that question, you got me taken back. There are a lot of people that care. The government cares. The fear that we have is that people are going to be throwing good money in the wrong direction. There are groups, gay men's health crisis, and again, it's not a gay disease. It's not an IV drug well, abuse. It started disease. off as a gay but disease. It's not, it's in not our minds, it started disease. off as a gay disease. No, boy, it's not, not a gay, gay disease. disease. It's not a gay disease. Right now, are you gay? No, I am not. Okay. All right. right now in Central Africa, you have a situation that in three or four years, 90% of that population is not going to be there. Where? And in about 15 Central Africa, right across the middle of Africa, you won't have a living human being there. Now, everybody in Central Africa covers is Zimbabwe? gay. Pardon me? Does that cover Zimbabwe? Right. Well, okay. right. this is... <laughs> no, go ahead. No, it's, it's to categorize this disease. Mm -hmm. And the reason why a lot of us are, are, are refusing to call it AIDS any longer is because the prejudice that is levied against people. Because the biggest fear is once someone finds out that they have the disease, to drive them underground. Because they're afraid they're going to lose their house. They're afraid they're going to lose their insurance. They're afraid their family's going to throw them out. And we can't create that. The biggest thing we have to do is take care of people who get sick with HIV disease, the same way we would do with cancer or right. any other disease. I know exactly what you're saying, all right, because when Peter Goldsmith, my senior segment producer, decided to ask my brother if he'd come on the show, and Tony agreed to come on the show and to reveal what has been revealed tonight, Tony, when he arrived here, said to me, my God, my house is for sale. Is this going to kill the sale of my house? Uh, am I going to lose my insurance? Well, I don't know about I don't know about his insurance, but if he does, I'll pay for it. And his house, I'll buy his house. But I imagine a lot of people are fearful of that, whether they're gay or anything else. Mark, there's 1,500 people, as we're talking today, in New York City hospital beds, acutely ill with HIV disease now. And by 1992, every hospital bed in the, in the New York City area will be filled with acutely ill AIDS patients, and there will be no room for anyone else who's sick. What do we do about the other people? Major problem. Major disaster. Major disaster already happened. A disaster? What the hell are we going to do about it, Rich? <sighs> well, we've got to convince people like the State Health Commissioner, New York State, and Jersey, to make sure that we have ample space to take care of people who are getting ill. Not only people with HIV disease, but our elderly. The largest yeah. group of gr growing group of population in this country are people over 100. So we're, we're, elderly population. we're really what's decaying, the, then, what aren't we? The I'll tell you what, Tone... Pardon me for just a second. Let me take a break for some commercial messages. I know you have some things you want to say. I want you to say them by all means. Please take a break, will you? Okay. Now. If the heart of America, if the heart of America is big, it's big for all of us. Mm -hmm. If the mind of America is smart, it's smart because of all of us. It's not because of our government, because we're supposed to be that government. I want to talk to the audience, all right? This is, you know, that's my cop-out. I always turn to the audience, you at home and these great folks who come here tonight. Sir, you're first up to bat, may I have your name? Sure. I'm John Lauritsen. I'm a writer for the New York native, or at I least know. I have been for the last two years. Uh, usually I'm in market. The fact that you went on my show tonight might be the end of your job. <laughs> no, not there. Uh, we'll see. Uh, let me say that I agree with Professor Duisberg. I've studied his uh, articles quite thoroughly. I don't think we know what the cause of AIDS is. In fact, I think he's pretty well proved that whatever the cause is, it's not HIV. But if the people who believe HIV is a cause, I think they have a right to put forward their hypothesis most people don't know they never have published an article that gave the reasons why we should consider it proven HIV is the cause. I think they should and give all the evidence they could with references, and then there could be a genuine scientific debate there. Would you tell my brother that he should get off AZT? Uh, I would indeed. I have written two articles on AZT, and the main things that impress me here, this fits in with my background in survey research. Uh, I went through hundreds and hundreds of pages of FDA documents that were released under the Freedom of Information Act. And I came to the conclusion, which was absolutely rock solid, that the trials on which approval of the drug were based were fraudulent. Well, um, they, it's pretty well admitted, and NBC News then a couple of months later did their own investigation, and they took me out. Uh, they found the same thing. 
The trials were supposed to be blinded, but they weren't. They became unblinded almost immediately, meaning patients knew what they were getting, and so did the doctors. Tony's T-cell count. Uh, yeah. You're familiar with T-cells. For our audience, uh, these gentlemen can explain it. I don't know what the hell it is. Tony's T-cell count dropped just below 100. All right? Within a week after going on AZT, it was up to 122, all right? A 23% gain. What, what is that attributable to? Uh, I could not say. It could be psychological. It could have been a pendulum swing or many things. But let me just finish. When I say if that you're wrong, yeah. will you go to his funeral and cry okay. for him? Yeah. When I say the trials are fraudulent, uh, there's real solid basis for it. So when we know that the trials in which the drug was approved were fraudulent, that means it's not even legally being sold now. Now, they used bad data. The FDA investigator recommended an entire city be dropped from the study. They used this garbage. They used uh, hundreds of patients. More than half of them had what they called violations of protocol, meaning they violated the rules of the study. And the FDA accepted all of this. It's what we would call garbage in research. They mixed it in with the good data. They never told the public that this had been done. And their reason was that it didn't, didn't influence the results much. Well, let me tell you something yeah. for just a second. Let me interrupt you for just a second. I have a, uh, an acquaintance that we were doing some research with while we're getting ready to do the show. Where's that piece of paper I gave you, David? All right. Where they are buying drugs. And Rich, I want you to hear this. Where those who are in the know in this community who have this disease are dry, buying drugs in the underground. All right. They're buying them in the underground. Tony, uh, I won't identify this because you come from the area where this is. All right. Where this pharmacy supposedly is. And the code word is, if you would like to be called when the order is shipped, please fill in your phone number and we will say... This is blank, returning your call. That is a code word, at which point they will send underground drugs to you, not AZT, but supposedly you're ordering AZT, all right? What, what, let, me, let me finish. What, what let, drugs me, is it? let me finish, all right? This person that I'm referring to in our research, his friend had 10 days to live, was dying, all right? 10 days to live, they had made the funeral arrangements. No way, he messed his bed, he vomited, he had the carcinomas, he had the... What the hell that lung thing is? He had the whole bit. I asked today if his friend had died yet. He's been using this. He was shopping at the Riverside Mall. Shopping at the Riverside Mall. We'll be right back. Some of the guests of the Morton Downey Jr. Show stay at the Meadowlands Hilton Hotel. Wish we had the time to go to everyone in the audience. I think we've heard a lot of information tonight, all right? I, I just want to say, this is my brother. I'm proud as hell of him. This is my audience. I'm proud as hell of you. And uh, I hope you don't die. I love you, pal. I love you.